<sighs> okay, uh, this is gonna be a weird year, isn't it? I can already tell. So yeah, we got some more leaks thanks to OnLeaks working with some of his inside sources, and he's been working very, very hard at making these new iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Max concepts that are extremely detailed, and we'll be talking about them today and my thoughts on them, and it feels like this iPhone development gets weirder and weirder as we get along, which is bizarre because as the days go by, we are closer and closer to mass production, which means at this point in time, the iPhone design is kind of finalized. Even for those of you holding out hope out there that are like, no, I don't believe any leaks. No rumors are for sure until the day before the event, and then they might be pretty accurate. I'm just telling you, the way things have gone in the past and inside sources these guys have had previous years, it's pretty safe to say they're likely right on the nose and they're likely pretty accurate in the first place. So today we're talking about the latest rumors that we have gotten from Slash Leaks starting now. So you may have seen this floating around Instagram or your Twitter page lately. It's these pictures of the camera bump that's kind of matching the color combination of the glass on the phone itself. And this is weird, and I can tell you guys are not gonna like this, but I feel like I have to bring it up. Suddenly, when he presented this horrible camera design that I've been criticizing for a long time, the fact that the camera bump is two and a half times the size of our current camera bumps, even though we're only gaining one lens, as soon as he presented me with with this design, with kind of the less prominent camera bump, which there is lots of evidence to suggest, iPhones are going to be getting slightly thicker this year so they can support bigger batteries, but the added bonus of that is the camera bump, while it is wider, it won't be as tall as it currently is on the 10s or the 10r. In fact, when you look at the back of a 10s and a 10r already, you can see that camera bump. It really does stick out quite a bit, and now transitioning to this, as much as I've criticized it, as much as I've not liked it, for some reason, when I I saw his concepts, I just started thinking, that doesn't look so bad, actually. And it's because I, uh, it's, uh, how do I say, it? it's, it's, has something to do with, uh, it's actually really bugging me more than I would like to admit. It's really bothering me because with this channel, I like to bring up facts and evidence as to why I don't like a particular design or why it's not a functional design. But for whatever reason, with this kind of silverish white glass back and not having the entire camera bump be blacked out and having just the lenses be black and the bump itself is still mostly white to go with the rest of the glass, I don't know what it is, but I just think it looks more premium it looks more natural. I'm not saying it looks better than our current generation phones. I'm just saying it doesn't look as horrendous and as ugly as, per se, the first generation leaks we got of this design, where the camera bump was quite noticeable and that big bulge on the back of the phone was very prominent. Now that I'm seeing like this, I don't know. It's just more obvious to me that it's like, oh, okay, there's a little bit of a ridge there, but for the most part, it's shrunk down a lot, which means that in regards to how much the phone rocks when you don't have a case on it and you rest it on a table, it probably won't be as rocky as before, kind of like the Galaxy S9 and the Galaxy S8. They had tiny camera bumps, but they were quite thin. And what's kind of funny is when the Galaxy S10 came out, the camera bump actually got a little bit thicker. But that's likely what you have to do in order to support all of those triple lens designs. But I'm kind of happy that Apple's opting in for thinner camera bump in favor of a bigger battery, which all of us have been okay with since the beginning. Not that many people are complaining that their iPhones are too thick. Most of us are like, it's too thin. I'm worried about flexion-based damage. And my battery's not big enough, so just make the phone thicker, and this is a step in that right direction. And I get it, there's a ton of people out there that hate this design. They don't like that the glass around the cameras is gonna be gold or white or whatever colors they decide to release the iPhone 11 in. Some people just want that camera module to stay completely black and completely dark, and I'm at a loss for words as to why I just think this looks better. It just has something to do with maybe the giant big square of black glass on the back is more obvious and more upfront about like, hey, we got microphones flashed all these cameras stuffed in here and it sticks out very noticeably on that whole design whereas when you slim down that camera module and now the only things that are black are the lenses themselves and they're all equal distance from each other I look at it and say you know what I think more aesthetically, that kind of goes in with the rest of the design of the iPhone. I don't know, it just feels more natural, and every design before this has felt a lot less Apple-esque. It's felt a lot more unnatural, and like, uh, are you sure they're really gonna do that? Whereas this design that he's presented, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable about it, but regardless, talking about the iPhone 11 as an upgrade as a whole, I kind of compare it very similarly to the iPhone 7. That, a lot of people considered an S upgrade, but there were a lot of tiny changes that people didn't 
didn't really notice that much because design-wise, it didn't look terribly different from an iPhone 6S. It was like, okay, the cell bands are moved a little bit. Okay, we got a dual camera on the Plus model. We got all these extra color options, but for the most part, home button's there. Design is mostly the same, and a lot of people were hoping for that brand new design because in years previous, they had the iPhone 4, 4S, and then a design change with a bigger screen with the iPhone 5 and 5S, and then they had a bigger screen and a design change with the iPhone 6. Then they got the 6S, so they were hoping with all of that momentum that the 7 was going to be something more major and very noticeable, and because the display was the same size and the design for the most part didn't change very much, it felt like a year you could easily skip and not that many people were excited. But once you got into using the phone, you realized there were quite a bit of differences, they just weren't on the surface. Whether it be stereo speakers, improved water resistance, solid state home button, haptic engine improvements, that portrait mode option that came to the iPhone 7 Plus later, maybe the iPhone 11 won't be quite as big of an upgrade as the iPhone 7 was, but still, it kind of feels like that, given we're getting more and more leaks that are suggesting, sadly, the notch is not changing in size. That means three years in a row that the iPhone's gonna look the same from the front if you're going with the 5.8 inch model. And then really the only differences are, of course, speed, battery life, basic improvements, and then the camera gets a little bit better. And while I can say I'm happy that both the smaller model and the larger model are getting that triple camera set up, there's more and more leaks and rumors suggesting that. I'm happy to hear about that because it kind of sucked for people back in iPhone 7 days when if you wanted to take advantage of those extra camera features, you had to buy the bigger phone. And a lot of people just don't want the bigger phone. So them having equal opportunity for both models is good. I'm in favor of that. But yeah, in regards to what the biggest design changes are from the 2018 lineup to the 2019 lineup, man, it is stale. It is boring. You'll be able to sum it up in about three minutes. In fact, maybe this should be the first iPhone they just don't have a keynote for. They just do a website refresh. I'm mostly kidding about that, but if they did it, it would be kind of hilarious and it would kind of speak volumes to how small of an upgrade it is. But with these rumors more and more being validified, I think it makes sense as to why Apple is pushing services so much. And I sadly think there's a good chance that the iPhone will take up a very little amount of time at the September event. And then the rest of the event, they could just talk about how important Apple TV Plus is for the world. Because honestly, what is there going to be to talk about with this year's lineup? All right, so here's the design. We added an ultra wide lens because lots of other people were doing that. We have the A13 chip, which is even faster than the A12 chip. Yeah, because everyone was complaining that the A12 chip wasn't fast enough. The batteries are longer, but I guess that's to be expected. No one would really be amazed by that, but I think more people would be disappointed if the batteries weren't better because if anything, the existence of the smart battery cases are evident that even Apple understands battery life, especially on that smaller iPhone XS, is not very good. So boosting that in 2019, yeah, makes a lot of sense. The notch is still there. The displays, the resolutions, the colors and everything, they're probably just gonna stay the same. And uh, yeah. That's about all we did. I'm still hoping for a Face ID improvement where we get an improved version of Face ID, but at this point with all of the small incremental upgrades, I wonder if that will even happen and Apple will rely kind of like they did with the iPhone XS last year on the CPU upgrade to convince people that Face ID is somehow better. We have the A13 chip now, which means Face ID works a little bit faster than before because of the processing power. And everyone kind of goes, what well, is it? Is the hardware different or are the sensors the same? Is that, well, yeah, the sensors are the same, but it's still Face ID, which is reliable and you like it, right? So we are continuing that. And everyone just kind of rolls their eyes in the theater. Plus the Apple Watch Series 5 is likely gonna be a very boring upgrade as well, unless they go forward with like the cheaper options and all the different colors and stuff. It's going to be kind of a difficult keynote to stretch to an hour to 90 minutes. They're gonna have to have a lot of fluff in there. And my God, this design change for the camera module on the back is likely one of the biggest camera aesthetic differences Apple has ever done year over year, which means that this camera better be pretty freaking impressive. That ultra wide better be wide and I'm expecting since these lenses are so much bigger than previous generation lenses on iPhones since these cameras are taking up so much more space on the back than they did before I'm expecting things to look real crispy I want a huge improvement on photo and video quality from the 10s even though those cameras are already insanely good this one better be major to justify that look on the back I would love it if that telephoto lens could zoom in even further than it did before I want to be able to record 4k at 60 on 
any of the lenses, unlike the Samsung phones, which don't do that. And I don't know, I want them to optimize the software so that it can like use all those lenses at the same time and maybe do some kind of portrait video type feature where bokeh is getting so good that they can render it in real time and you can record videos with it. So it looks like you're recording videos on a DSLR almost or something like that, but it doesn't have to be that specifically. All I'm saying is just, it needs to be a huge camera upgrade if they want us to be excited for this and if they expect anyone to upgrade to the iPhone 11 because people with the iPhone 10s from the front at least are gonna think we have the exact same phone as the iPhone 11 what's really the big deal the screen sizes are the same the notch is the same the displays nothing's changing there all that's changing is camera quality which in the first place isn't that bad isn't bad at all in fact on the current generation iPhone 10s I know there's a ton of people that didn't buy the 2018 iPhones at all and they still have 2017 iPhone 10s but even though those. When you consider how they have aged compared to where the 2019 lineup is going to stand, it's definitely a more drastic upgrade because you're skipping a year, but at the same time, from the front at least, aesthetically, not much is changing. It's still gonna be stainless steel, still gonna be Face ID, still gonna be OLED displays with gesture control. Oh yeah, and the iPhone 11R is getting a dual camera, but if you're excited about the iPhone 10R in the first place, you probably don't care that much about dual cameras, so getting it onto the budget model is kind of a big whoop, I think, for a lot of people because that's just supposed to be the everyday consumer phone. So are they going to care that there's a dual camera on the more affordable one? Maybe some of you will, but to me the real question comes down to what are they going to do with the 2018 lineup once they drop the 2019 lineup? With the small incremental changes they're making, it may make a lot of sense to just kind of discontinue the 10s and 10s Max like they did with the iPhone 10 when the 2018 lineup dropped and just say, okay, you know what? If you're buying a new iPhone and you're willing to spend a thousand dollars, don't look at the 20 18 lineup. Don't look at the 10s or the 10s Max. Just focus on the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Max. Those are the new ones. Those have the best features and they just want all your eyes over there. They don't want you to even consider buying from a third party or getting a refurbished or a used or anything because they know that probably if people could save easily like $100, a ton would likely just opt for the year old 10s and 10s Max because those chips are perfectly fine. Those cameras are perfectly fine and the reasons to upgrade are going to be shrinking more and more and more and without question the 2019 iPhone iPhones are not going to sell as well as the 2018 iPhones, which notoriously are known for not even selling that great. So the smartphone industry, particularly for Apple, is going to continue to decline. Best case scenario, I think Apple, maybe they keep around the iPhone 10R in 2019, but they'll lower the price a little bit. I think to say they would lower it $100 is a little bit generous given how Apple treats things, particularly when they have Face ID. Apple usually makes them quite expensive. So maybe they'll lower the price of the iPhone 10R to $700 and then the iPhone 11 R which will still have an LCD display all of the features of the 10 R except now it has a dual camera and probably that a 13 chip they'll justify that dual camera and that faster CPU for a little bit of a price increase so the iPhone 11 R starts at $800 and the iPhone 10 R will be lowered to $700 so they're $100 apart if you really don't care about the fastest CPU or having the most cameras then you can go for the year old iPhone 10 R but if you don't want to quite reach a thousand dollars but you'd still like a dual camera and the fastest CPU you can get, then the iPhone 11 R will be there for those people. Man, this lineup's gonna get confusing. I just don't see a way they could keep selling the 10s and 10s Max after the 2019 iPhones drop. To me, it doesn't make sense as they would keep doing that because they would butcher the sales too heavily. So that's what I'm anticipating is gonna happen. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. This is your Apple Jeep here, and I will see you in the next one.